hands, constant groping of things unknown, drawing from the endless reaches of time, brings to light many startling things. <laughs> startling because they seem new, sudden. But most are not new to the signs of the ages. <laughs> One is wrong because he does right. And one is right because he does wrong. Pull the string. Dance to that one is created for. A new life is begun. A life is ended. Let me see that note. The records will tell the story. I was put in jail recently. Why? Because I, a man, was caught on the street wearing women's clothing. This was my fourth arrest for the same act. In life, I must continue wearing them. Therefore, it would only be a matter of time until my next arrest. This is the only way. Let my body rest in death forever in the things I cannot wear in life.
Inspector Warren is here to see you, Dr. Alton. Oh, yes. Uh, show him in, Miss Stevens. Inspector? Doctor? Sit down. Thank you. You're a very busy man, Dr. Alton, I know. I appreciate this time you're giving me. Business or pleasure, Inspector? In a way, uh, business. From policeman to inspector, 20 years of it. <laughs> I guess I've seen everything there is for a policeman to see. Yet I wonder if we ever stop learning. Learning about which we see. Trying to learn more about uh, an ounce of prevention. I'm a man who thrives on learning. We only have one life to live. If we throw that one away, what is there left? Doctor, I'm hoping to uh, learn something from you. And with that knowledge, maybe save some human from a fate which I just witnessed a few days ago. A four-time loser. This type of case comes to me as well as yourself many times during the course of one month. The suicide? The suicide. Most of us have our idiosyncrasies. This fellow's was quite pronounced. Yes, but I wonder if it rated the death warrant it received. Well, that's why I'm here today, Doctor. What do we do about it? I've always heard you to be a hard-hearted policeman, Inspector. <laughs> Isn't that what's thought of most policemen? The laws are written. The policeman is hired to see that those laws are enforced. We have a job to do. As in most jobs, there's always somebody who doesn't want that job to be done. In most factories today, the employer has put up suggestion boxes. Even the employer needs advice once in a while. I think in the case that we're referring to, I need advice. Maybe it shouldn't have happened as it did. But it did. Perhaps the next time we can prevent it. Let's get our story straight. You're referring to the suicide of the transvestite? If that's the word you men of medical science use for a man who wears woman's clothing, yes. Yes, in cold, technical language, that's the word. As unfriendly and as vicious as it may sound. However, in actuality, it's not an unfriendly word, nor is it vicious when you know the people to whom it pertains. Was this operation do these people any good? I understand you were quite prominent in a case that hit the headlines a few weeks ago. In some cases, yes. Others, no. Well, the papers certainly had a field day with that one. Strange as it may seem, even though it was a field day, as you so aptly put it, it's not a new story. Sex change has been performed many times. Those whose sex can be changed, they're the easy ones. But what of those who so desperately want to be of the opposite sex, yet can't change their sex, such as was the case with Patrick, Patricia, the suicide? I'd like to understand this, Doctor, as best you can tell me. You can only fully understand the sex change by taking two entirely different cases. Two men with exactly the same background, from childhood to manhood, and onto their own decisions and destinations. I'd like to hear the story to the fullest. Only the infinity of the depths of a man's mind can really tell the story. man, though he is, speaks the words of the all-wise. No one can really tell the story. Mistakes are made. But there is no mistaking the thoughts in a man's mind. The story is begun.
One might say, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Why is the modern world shocked by this headline? Why? Once, not so very long ago, the people of the world were saying, Airplanes, huh. Why, it's against the Creator's will. If the Creator wanted us to fly, he'd have given us wings. But we fly. Maybe some of you may still remember an even sillier remark. Automobiles? Bad. They scare the hosses. If the Creator had meant for us to roll around the countryside, we'd have been born with wheels. Silly? Certainly. We were not born with wings. We were not born with wheels. But in the modern world of the day, it's an accepted fact that we must have them. So we have corrected that which nature has not given us. Strangely enough, nature has given us all these things. We just had to learn how to put nature's elements together for our use, that's all. Yet, the world is shocked by a sex change. If the Creator had wanted us to fly, he'd have given us wings. If the Creator had meant us to roll around the countryside, we'd have been born with wheels. If the Creator had meant us to be boys, we certainly would have been born boys. If the Creator had meant us to be born girls, we certainly would have been born girls. Are we sure? Nature makes mistakes. It's proven every day. This person is a transvestite, a man who is more comfortable wearing girls' clothes. The term transvestite is the name given by medical science to those persons who wear the clothing of the opposite sex. Many a transvestite actually wishes to be the opposite sex. The title of this can only be labeled Behind Locked Doors. Give this man satin undies, a dress, a sweater, and a skirt, or even the lounging outfit he has on, and he's the happiest individual in the world. He can work better, think better, he can play better, and he can be more of a credit to his community and his government because he is happy. These things are his comfort. But why the wig and makeup? He dares to enter the street dressed in the clothes he so much desires to wear, but only if he really appears female. The long hair, the makeup, the clothing, the actual contours of a girl. Most transvestites do not want to change their life, their bodies. Many of them simply want to change the clothing they wear to that as worn by the opposite sex. Glenn is engaged to be married to Barbara, a lovely, intelligent girl. Those fingernails have got to go. You know, I didn't realize they're as long as they are. My goodness, they're almost as long as mine. Maybe even prettier. We'll have to paint them sometime, just for the fun of it. We'll trim them. That's for sure. You know, honey, you've invited me to dinner so many times in the last couple of months. It's almost like we were married already. I wish we were, darling. It's been a long year. For both of us. But now... My studies are through, college is concluded, and I'm free at last. Free? For the time being. Huh? Oh. <laughs> How about joining me for an after-dinner drink? In the living room? Mm-hmm. Modern man is a hard-working human. Throughout the day, his mind and his muscles are busy at building the modern world and its business administration. His clothing is rough, coarse, starched, according to the specifications of his accepted job. At home, what does modern man have to look forward to for his body comfort? The things provided for his home, a wool or flannel robe, his feet encased in the same thick, tight-fitting leather that his shoes are made of. These are the things provided for his home comfort. It doesn't look so comfortable, does it? And get the hat. Better still, get the receding hairline. Men's hats are so tight, they cut off the blood flow to the head, thus cutting off the growth of hair. Seven out of 10 men wear a hat, so the advertisements say. Seven out of 10 men are bald. But what about the ladies? Yes. Modern woman is a hard-working individual also, but 
When modern woman's day of work is done, that which is designed for her home comfort is comfort. Hats that give no obstruction to the blood flow. Hats that do not crush the hair. Interesting thought, isn't it? Just for comparison, let's go native, back to the animal instinct. There, in the lesser civilized part of the world, it's the male who adorns himself with a fancy objects, such as paints, frills, and masks. The true instinct, the animal instinct, bird and animal life. Is it not so that it's the male who is the fancy one? Could it be that the male was meant to attract the attention of the female? What's so wrong about that? Where is the animal instinct in modern civilization? Female has the fluff and the finery, as specified by those who design and sell. Little Miss Female, you should feel quite proud of the situation. You, of course, realize that it's predominantly men who design your clothes, your jewelry, your makeup, your hairstyling, your perfume. But life, even though its changes are slow, moves on. There's no law against wearing such apparel on the street as long as it can be distinguished that man is man and woman is woman. But what is it that would happen were this individual to appear this way on the street? You're doing it now, laughing. Yet, it's not a situation to be laughed at. Thus, the strange case of Glenn, who was Glenda, one and the same person, not half man, half woman, but nevertheless, man and woman in the same body even though, by all outward appearances, Glenn is fully and completely a man. Sister, let me borrow her dress. You want to borrow your sister's dress? What for? I want to wear it to the Halloween party. And there are names for boys who go around wearing girls' clothes. Oh, don't be silly, darling. You go ahead and wear your sister's dress, Glenn. You always did look much better as a girl than you do as a man. Glenn did wear the dress to the Halloween party. He even took first prize. Then one day, it wasn't Halloween any longer. I wish I had the sight into such things to be able to advise you, Sheila. Maybe... Maybe if you took the problem to a doctor. It's Glenn that needs the doctor. But when things like this go wrong with someone so close and, and in your own family, it's so hard to believe. It's not really hard to believe. It's just hard for you to accept. Well, of course it's hard for me to accept. Suppose I, I were to come home with Roy or one of my other boyfriends some night and find Glenn like I did last night. Yeah. That would be hard to explain. That's the understatement of the year. Just how does one go about introducing your friends to your brother? When brother's wearing your best sweater and your skirt and makeup to boot. Glenn is a transvestite, but he is not a homosexual. Transvestism is the term given by medical science to those persons who desperately wish to wear the clothing of the opposite sex yet whose sex life in all instances remains quite normal. Would you be surprised if a tough, tough individual was wearing pink satin undies under his rough exterior clothing? He is. Then there is your friend the milkman who, who knows how to find comfort at home. I can't stand it any longer. He wears all my clothes. Nothing is sacred to him, even my briefs. 
He has every one of my sweaters stretched out of shape. Of course, he has always replaced them. But then, they didn't last long either. But your honor, ruffles on his shirts and shorts, really. Glenn and all the hundreds of thousands of other Glens across the nation face quite a problem. Glenn is engaged to be married to Barbara, a lovely, intelligent girl. The problem? Glenda, Glenn's other self. The girl that he himself is, his other individual personality. You look tired tonight, Glenn. Yeah, I guess I am. It's been a long day. Have you seen the paper yet? No, why? Isn't that a strange case? I wonder how some people's mind works. Well, some people aren't happy the way they are. That's a pretty drastic step to take. If it's the only way, I'm for it. I wonder what I would do in a case like that, if I were in the mental turmoil that that person went through. Or if I suddenly realized that something was mentally wrong with you. Ooh, it's hard to visualize. Here we are, two perfectly normal people, about to be married and lead a normal life together. And there's this poor fellow who never could have been happy if it wasn't for modern medical science. Our fourth term in psychology explains a lot of the facts. But I'm afraid the end of study is only the beginning of reality. Glenn's problem is a deep one, but he must tell her soon. She's begun to notice things, his nails, his eyes when he looks into a lady's store window, so many of the little things that are hard to hide. Soon she will realize. Then there was the time Barbara was wearing the sweater Glenn had always wanted to feel on his own body. It was becoming an obsession to him. He must have. What's the matter, Glenn, darling? <laughs> I guess I was daydreaming. Something seems to be troubling you. Why don't you tell me? It's nothing. Once, long ago, just after we started going steady together, we promised we'd never lie to each other. Are we going to start now, just because we're engaged to be married? It's just that. Oh, Barbara, it's nothing that a little sleep won't cure. It's been an awful long day. It's more than that. Come on, tell me, darling. Who knows? Maybe I can help. That's just it. You could. Then something is troubling you. Yes. Do I have a right to know? You have a right to know. But let's just say for the moment that I'm afraid to tell you. I'm afraid I'd lose you. Nothing could be as bad as all that. I love you, and you love me. And nothing in the world can change that. I hope not. I really hope not. Glenn, is it another woman? Hold the string! Hold the string! A mistake is made. A story must be told. Always the same. He's not had the nerve to tell her. But he must soon come to some conclusion or forget the marriage. Should he tell Barbara of his Glenda now, before the wedding, or hit her between the eyes with it after, when it might be too late for either of them? The world is a strange place to live in. All those cars, all going someplace, all caring humans which are carrying out their lives. The world is shocked by a person who changed his sex. Glenda is shocked also, but by another reason. Someone like her had the nerve to do something factual about their situation. There are so many problems for Glenn and all the other Glenn. Perhaps the fear of discovery of the underthings they wear beneath their regular outer clothing, or that which they wear during their nightly visit to Morpheus, god of sleep. Thank you very much, and I'm sure she's going to enjoy it very much. If you want to return it, be sure that you bring the sales slip. Thank you.
Can I help you, sir? Yeah. Let me see a 90. Well, what size? 12. Uh, the color, the material? Black, very sheer. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this here. Would you like that? Something like this? As late? Perhaps he admires the material too long. You can see how sheer this material really is. Yes. You see, it's all pure nylon and only $21.95. And of course, it will never snag. Glenn and Glenda, and all the Glens and Glendas have an even bigger problem. Hi, Joe. Hi, you, Jack. Monday again. You know, I think Monday is about the worst day of the week. A perfectly wonderful weekend, and back to the sweatshops. Too bad he was born to work. Say, did you read about the guy that hangs to a girl? Says he was perfectly normal, too. How can a guy be normal and go and do a thing like that to himself? All the same, it must take a lot of guts to pull a stunt like that. That's a problem I don't ever intend to face. Maybe it's a problem we should all face. I don't get you. Just think of the unhappy life. The miserable time this world of ours must have given that poor guy. I still don't get you. Now, here is a guy who wanted to be a girl. Supposing there had been no way to change. You sound as if you're really head up on this thing. I guess I am. Do you realize what would happen if every man in the country that wanted to wear women's clothes or felt like a woman went to their doctors and wanted to change? Of course. That's why I say perhaps society should be a little bit more lenient with them. Maybe society should try to understand them as human beings. Another day done, thank goodness. See you tomorrow, Jack. Hi, Johnny. Come on in and hit it right for the kitchen. I can't let that dinner burn. You know, I thought I was going to have to eat alone tonight. Well, you probably will because I've already eaten. What's up? Nothing much. Say. You really look down in the dumps. I guess I got a problem. Haven't we all? I mean a real problem, one like I've never had to face before. Our whole existence is one big problem after another. I want to get married. You have a problem. When did this all come about? For nearly a year, I've been engaged to a very wonderful girl. Now the time is getting very close to the man with the book. I'm scared to death. You love her? Very much. Does she love you? Yes. There's no problem. Marry the girl. Are you forgetting about my other self? You'll have to tell her, of course. Yeah. I have to tell her. But when? Before or after? I think you know the answer to that one yourself. My mind's in a muddle, like in a thick fog. I can't make sense to myself sometimes. I thought I could stop wearing these things. I tried, honestly, I tried. I haven't had a stitch of them on for nearly two weeks until tonight. Then I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to put the moniker out of my mind. I'm afraid I'll lose her. I don't want that to happen because I really love her. OK. Here's a story from fact. Johnny tells his story. He had not too long ago been married himself. 
He had kept quiet about his transvestite desires in the hopes that the new wife would never discover it. However, one day, the little woman came home unexpectedly an hour early. That marriage ended here. Will your problem be like mine? Most probably it will. Because a love hasn't been built up for such a thing. She, your wife, she will not have been taught enough about the problems to cope with it. Glenn, Glenda must now make her decision or forever forget the marriage to Barbara. Glenn, Glenda should consult a competent psychiatrist, but then very few transvestites wish to change their strange desires. This is their life. To take it away from them might do as great a harm as taking away an arm or a leg or life itself. Many even carry their transvestite desires to the grave with them. Yes, it is a problem. But Glenda, remember back almost a year ago when Glenn and Barbara accepted each other? Good night. I guess it is. Look. Come on over here a minute. What is oh, it? Never mind, just sit down. Oh, I was beginning to think you'd never get around to it. Did you mean you will? What do you think? When? I must finish college first. It's only seven months to go. Well, now that's hardly long enough for you to get a trousseau together. How would you know about such things? Glenn, what's the matter? Huh? All of a sudden, you seem a thousand miles off. Yes, I, I guess I was, huh? That's a mighty pretty dress you're wearing tonight. I wear my best to please you. You know, when, when you look at me, you just tie me in knots. I love to tie you in knots. Oh, I'll be so happy when these next few months are over. Some special reason? Of course. So you can stop kissing me goodbye at the door every night. Yes. So you can hold me close to you always. Yes. Then all you'll have to do is call and close your eyes to feel my lips on yours. that sits on your doorstep. He eats little boys. Bobby duck tails and big fat snails. Beware. Take care. Beware.
Tell me. Tell me, dragon. Do you eat little boys? Puppy duck tails and big fat snails? Puppy duck tail, puppy duck tail, puppy duck tail. 